Um, well, we have the ability to, um, you know, play different games, play different matchups, um, have different rotations. Um, I think Jr. Um, and, and Dion uh, definitely gives us that even more of that ability to go small, um, having multiple ball handlers and, and scores on the floor. Um, I thought Kuz was excellent tonight in AC off the bench. Um, and we just tried to, uh, you know, after they made a run, which we know all great teams are going to make a run in the third quarter, we just tried to combat that by making our own run. Um, and, you know, AD caught fire, and we just started defending a little bit more. You guys had a couple of key stops late, of course, uh, some from you, some from Kuzma. But what was your mindset like defensively in this game as you guys just start getting integrated before the playoffs come in, in another uh, couple of weeks around? Well, I mean, you know, any. You know, we've been out for four months or, or whatever the, whatever it was since the last action we had versus, uh, versus Brooklyn at Staples Center. So, um, you know, rhythm as far as offensively and making shots, those things are going to take a little bit longer, um, you know, to get, you know, uh, back to your rhythm and your flow and, and how you shoot the ball and things of that nature. But the one thing you can do is defend because uh, you can always communicate. You can communicate through mistakes that you may happen. Um, you can, you know, you have teammates that would, you know, back you up uh, when you do make a mistake or whatever the case may be. So, the communication and defensive side is something that should always be on point. Hey, LeBron, it's David Goodman. You haven't played in LA all that long, but tonight was the first time since being a Laker that you hit a go-ahead shot in the final 15 seconds of a ball game to get the win. What are you looking for in those situations? Obviously, not every time is, is equal, but what does does your uh, senses get heightened or? or you relish those those chances? Yeah, I mean, um, I love having the ball in my hands, you know, late in the game, <clears throat> tie game, being down, uh, being up. You know, we had a we had a three point game with like 40 seconds to go. We got a, uh, you know, a great look for Danny. He missed it. Paul George came back and hit a uh, hit a three to tie the game. And uh, for me, just try to you know be aggressive. You know, I felt like I got some contact at the elbow, um, you know, by by Marcus Morris. And they didn't call it, um, but you know. You know, like you know, like you was told when you was a kid. You know, ever since I started playing basketball, if there's no whistle, you keep playing on. So I was able to follow my own shot and uh, you know put us up, uh, put us up for good. Hey LeBron, it's Bill Lorem. Hey, uh, considering your support of Colin Kaepernick over the years and and kind of what what his journey has been like since he first meet, took a, took a knee, I'm curious what um, <clears throat> what that moment was for you personally tonight. Um, I hope we made Cap proud. I hope we continue to make Cat proud, um, you know, every single day. Um, I hope I, I hope I make him proud on, on how I live my life, not only, you know, out on the basketball floor, but off the floor. You know, I've been one to always speak about speak out about things that I feel like that's unjust uh, or unjust. Or, and I always, you know, if I'm educated on things, I always, um, you know, go about it that way. Um, so, you know, Cat was someone who um, who stood up when, when times wasn't comfortable where people didn't understand, uh, people refused to listen uh, to what he was saying. If you go back and look at any of his post-game interviews when he was talking about why he was kneeling, um, it had absolutely nothing to do about the flag. It had absolutely nothing to do about the soldiers, that um, the men and women that keep us uh, keep our land free. Um, he explained that, and the ears were closed. People never listened. They refused to listen. Um, and uh, I did, um, and, and a lot of my my people, um, you know, in the black community did listen, and, and we just thank him for sacrificing, um, you know, everything that he did um, to put us in a position today, um, even, you know, years later, to be able to have that moment like we had tonight. Okay, Tanya. Yep, thank you, Tanisha. Tanya? <clears throat> Um, it kind of just happened, but, um, you know, if you've been you know, looking at any of my, like, you know, when I send out emojis or whatever the case may be on social media, I've been putting that out as well. You know, just having that, that commitment to the, to the black community, having my fist up in the air, I understand how unified, um, I want, you know, my community, not only in my hometown, um, but all over the world to know how unified, you know, I hope we are, uh, I want us to become and, uh, and us to be heard. You know, and then uh, just giving thanks to the man above for giving me an opportunity to have this platform, you know, and uh, because nothing is possible without the grace of God. And we all know that it's just giving us a breath of life. And um, you know, like I said, using this platform, using who I am, um, you know, I try to use it for the greater good. And I hope I make people proud. And I hope I'm, you, uh, you know, make my kids proud of my, you know, not only in my household, but also, you know, like in my school and things of that nature in my, in my community. Kyle Goon. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, 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 no. Um, LeBron, you told us a couple of days ago that one of the things you really missed was feeling those competitive juices. I'm wondering, this game, but also that sequence you had with Paul George kind of going basket for basket, was that sort of the thing you missed about basketball? Absolutely. You know, playing against the greatest uh, basketball players in the world at this level, this is the last level. This is the last level that you can get as far as playing basketball. And it, you're fortunate to be able to. I've been playing against a lot of great players that has graced this, this league over my 17 year career. And, uh, you know, two of them was on the floor tonight on their opposing side, and I have one on my team as well. So, you know, just that competitive, you know, um, that spirit, that, that fight to whatever, you know, you want to try to help, you know, even if you're not shooting the ball well or you're not playing particularly well, being able to do things, you can always help in other ways, either by your voice or getting a defensive stop or just, uh, you know, just your presence. So, uh, <clears throat> those are, that's, that's what's fun about the game. Rachel Nichols. Brian, you had uh, CP, Melo, a handful of other All Stars who came out and were sort of player session watching your game. Does that give you guys a little extra juice since you don't have fans here to at least know that a bunch of your peers wanted to be here and are watching the best? Um, you know, I think it's, it's a respect. Uh, and. Um, you know, we're all a brotherhood, and, uh, you know, definitely, you know, having CP and Melo, you guys know my relationship with those two guys. But, you know, looking over there and seeing some of our uh, guys in our league, CJ, uh, you know, from my, from around my block, uh, you know, and Dame and, uh, and a, lot, a lot of other guys, um, uh, I think it's just pretty cool, you know, and I hope throughout the course of this, uh, uh, this time while we're here in this bubble that I can make it to a few games too, uh, just out of the love of the game. I love, you know, getting an opportunity um, to watch the game live, and you don't have that much. You don't have that much uh, time throughout the course of you know regular, um, you know NBA scheduling when, in, before the, the the COVID. So um, you know it's a pretty good dynamic. It's a it's a big like I said, it's a big AAU uh, feeling for for grown men, um, and uh, you know we just want to try to take advantage of it. Damien said it's like live league pass. <laughs> 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 you guys all being here together. How, I mean, you guys talked about being a brotherhood or being. Players all being sort of brothers across teams, but this has never happened before. You guys all together? No, it hasn't. But um, you know, it's 2020. People, you know, 2020 is something that we've never seen before. So, um, you know, we are in the land of uh, of the unknown, and, and things are happening for the first time. Um, so you just take it uh, for what it is. Um, don't take the moment for granted because we are still living and alive and, and we're back to doing what we love to do, either covering the game or playing the game or watching the game or being able to report the game as you guys are doing. So, um, you know, that, that is a blessing, even though, uh, you know, 2020 has been pretty, you know, but we're, we're all blessed. Okay, we're going to do three last questions. Taylor? Uh, you really don't have a response because no matter what you do in life, there's always going to be people that won't agree with whatever you do. You can go to a fast food restaurant and you can go to the drive-thru and they're going to say, why you didn't walk in and get your food? You know, it doesn't, you, you can wear black and they're going to say, why didn't you wear white? Um, you know, so no matter what you do in life, you're always going to have people that will uh, try to pick a part of whatever you do. But if you're passionate and you're true and you're authentic to whatever your cause is, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, and, and for me, you guys should, you guys should know me. I can, I can care less about the, the naysayers. I've been hearing it for too long, and I, I've been done about caring about that. Is that all? Right? Nope. We have two more. So um, Joe, and then Bill Plaschke will be your last one. No problem. Joe Burke. Yeah, we were talking. You were talking earlier about Colin, and if you go all the way back to 17. Yeah, you guys definitely always supported what he was doing, but the timing you were at, you said that I didn't, I didn't personally. So I was just wondering um, about your evolution on that specific thing because you don't necessarily do things just for everybody else. Yeah, um, I just don't. I don't think at that point in time I wasn't fully educated. Um, you know, strengthening the mind, reading, listening, um, getting as educated as I can be on any situation, on anything that's going on, um, as I, has been always who I am. You know, and, and until I'm fully educated and fully um, aware. Of, um, of what's going on, then I, and I, I call for action. So, 
Um, and I, I feel like at that time I wasn't fully educated on, on, on the purpose, uh, what is the purpose at hand. Um, and obviously Cap has taught me a lot um, about that. So, um, you know, that's what it was. Last question, Bill Plasky. No, Ron, by the end of the game, could you sense that the intensity was perhaps similar to what you could have been playing back at Staples Center against these guys? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, we're two teams in the same city. Um, you know, and two teams that's uh, fighting for one common goal, and that's to uh, uh, win a championship and bring it to the city of Los Angeles and their respective uh, fan base. So, um, you know, like you have just so many competitors on the floor, um, you know, so, you know, going out there and representing the purple and gold, representing Laker Nation and those, those guys doing the same thing for their fan base, um, no matter what uh, the cause is, no matter what the bubble is, no fans is, or fans, basketball is basketball, and competitive spirit is competitive spirit. So um, we got right back to uh, you know right back to where we left off.